Hi there, this is Ms. Townsend and welcome to Math with Townsend. We're looking at the Grade 9 Academic Analytic Geometry Summative. This is question 13. So the question says, at 1.30, Kenji left town driving at 80 kilometers per hour. At 2 o'clock, Yvette left town along the same highway at 100 kilometers per hour. So two different people, two different start times, two different speeds. It says to create an equation for each driver, showing the relationship between distance and time. Plot both equations on the same grid, and then there's some questions we have to answer. So first, let's think about this equation we're going to create. So we know that distance is in kilometers, no problem. Time is in hours. Now, this is sort of weird, because in math we don't really use time as clock references. So we don't say 1.30. What we do is we pick a time to be the start time. And in this question, clearly 1.30 seems to be the start time. So we're going to let t equals 0 be 1.30. So every time that's important in this question will be with reference to 1.30. Um, so we're going to call that the, basically the start time. And that means 2 o'clock, so 2 o'clock, which is Yvette's start time, is actually t equals 0 0.5. So that's the first thing that we have to do in this question, translate clock time into mathematical time, like this and this. Now, there's a lot going on in this question because you have, again, different times, different speeds. So before I do anything else, I'm going to want to draw a picture because that's how I understand things best. So let me grab myself a piece of grid paper here, drag it over, and we're just going to try to quickly get a feel for this question. So we're not actually going to try to graph beautifully. We're just going to get a feel for what's happening in this question. Um, so piece of grid paper, got my axes. Now, we know that time has to be independent because time is independent of everything. No matter what you do, time will go on. So there's distance time, and we know we have times like an hour. So here's an hour. Here's half an hour. Here's an hour. Here's one and a half hours. Again, I'm just going to make a quick sketch. Um, now, let's call this 50, and we'll call this 100, and we'll call this 150. And again, it's a sketch. I don't know if those are good or not. We'll figure it out. Let's talk about Kenji. We know that Kenji, we'll call him K, um, went 80 kilometers per hour, and he started right at the beginning. So here's Kenji. Half an hour later, he's gone half an hour. So he's gone 40 kilometers. An hour later, 80 kilometers. Oops, almost the wrong one. An hour and a half, so another 40. So that's 120 total. So there's Kenji. And let's get a line drawn through those points as best we can. Hmm. Pretty good, and I can tell I messed up one of my points, so let me fix. This is why we do math in pencil, right, guys? Exactly. So this is 100, 120. Okay, so there's Kenji's line. Now, that was fine. The problem is, of course, that Yvette, who's going 100 kilometers per hour, doesn't start at t equals 0. Yvette starts here, half an hour later. So, hmm, in a half an hour, Yvette will go 50 kilometers. In a whole hour, she'll go 100 kilometers. So let's see what her line looks like. And we're using red. So there's Yvette. Now, Kenji, this... Kenji's line is going to be really, really easy to determine the equation of. I mean, I know the starting value, and I know the slope. 
So Yvette's line, well, I can calculate slope, but where does it start? We never use the horizontal or x-axis as a starting value. Start is the vertical axis. So let's see if we can extrapolate and figure out exactly where Yvette, her line, will start. So I'm going to take her line and theoretically move it backwards. So again, we know that she actually started here, but I need the equation of a line. And mathematically speaking, a line is a line. It doesn't matter what Yvette really did. So there's her line extended to the vertical axis. Now, if I could figure out where this point is, I can tell you where she starts and find the equation of her line. So let's think. We know that this distance here is a half an hour, and we know that in a half hour, Yvette can go 50 kilometers per hour. So this point right here must be minus 50. So let's think about what that means. In the reality of this question, Kenji started at time equals zeros and went at a particular speed. Vet waited 30 minutes later and then started and went a slightly faster speed. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of changing the question mathematically. It means the same thing, but I'm going to say now that instead of a vet starting later, I'm going to say that she started further away. So this way they can both start at the start, t equals zero, or the vertical axis. And Kenji starts here at our zero line. And this time, think of a vet starting further back. She still is where we need her to be at time equals 30 minutes, and she's still running 100 kilometers per hour, but now we can talk about her equation because we have this theoretical starting point for her line. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, here's Kenji's equation. The distance that Kenji travels is dependent upon the time. For every one hour, Kenji goes 80 kilometers. Uh, and again, you can see that Kenji's starting point is right at zero, so I don't need to put plus anything because I don't write plus zero. So that's Kenji's equation with D in kilometers and T in hours. So now Yvette. And again, Yvette's distance is dependent upon the time. How many hours has she been moving? For every hour, Yvette goes 100 kilometers. And again, Yvette starts back here at minus 50. That's how we compensate for the different time starts. So there's Yvette's equation, and there's Kenji's equation. Excellent. So now it says to plot both equations on the same grid. So I sort of did that, but I certainly wouldn't want to hand this in for marks. And, and plus, that interesting intersection point is kind of off grid. So let's see if we can make a better graph. So again, I'm going to grab a grid, but this time I'm going to use the powers of computers to make a bigger grid. Oops, I don't want that. Beep, beep. So, a bigger grid. There. Pretty close to perfect. Oops. And I'm just going to glue these together as if it's one piece of paper. Group, group. There's my giant grid. Isn't it lovely? So again, this time it's for keep, so let's make it nice. This is going to be the distance axis. Make it nice. This is time down here. And I kind of liked the scale I was picking. So why not say half an hour, one hour, one and a half hours, two hours. You hear me counting? That's right. Sometimes math is counting. 
three hours and this would be three and a half. And I'll put a big T there and I'll put this so someone knows that it's in hours. Now up here, again, I liked the scale. That was 50. And this was 100. And this was 150. And this axis was measuring distance in kilometers. Good. So let's put a couple dots on again to remind ourselves what Kenji did. Started at zero. Um, half an hour later, 40. An hour later was at 80, etc. So we'll make a green line for Kenji as best as we can through those points. Beautiful. And we'll call this big K for Kenji. And then let's talk about Yvette. Now, I don't need to show Yvette's theoretical backwards time. That was just for thinking. She starts here. Half an hour later, so again, from here to here is half an hour. She's gone 50. And an hour, so half an hour plus half an hour, she's gone 100. And let's draw her line. Do, do, do. And hopefully, excellent. So, there's Yvette. Oh, look, I wrote her name in arrows. Good enough. So there's my lovely graph. Now, again, you know, I'm on a computer. You guys would write some lovely words here that would represent some sort of title. You know. Um, let's look carefully here. Because if you remember, now that I've done an equation and I've plotted, at what time did Yvette catch up to Kenji and how far had they traveled at that time? Both of these things, at what time did they catch up and how far, are asking me about that intersection point. So let's look at it. Um, let's use magic pen for a second. There it is. The intersection point is right there. And let's use this graph and figure out where it is. Basically, it's here. Now, a graph is never a perfect thing. So as long as we're pretty close to the right answer, it's good enough. What time is this? Um, so this is two hours. This is two hours. This would be two and a half hours. So this is um, two hours and three-fifths of a half hour. Hmm. What does that mean? Three-fifths of 30 minutes is 90 over 5, which is 18 minutes. Math is good. So time, the time that Yvette caught up was at 2 hours and 18 minutes. And how far had they traveled? 150, 160, 170, 180 kilometers. So the intersection right here is the point 2 hours, 18 minutes, and that's 180 kilometers. So I hope that helped, especially the idea of visualizing what's happening in a question. I think that's very important, especially for someone like me. I think when I see. So that's it. That's the end of all 13 of our questions. I hope this has helped you and I'll see you in class. Bye bye.